Let me show you an implementation of a linked list in VB.net. This is my user interface. The buttons are in this order because I'm going to talk about traversing and searching an existing linked list first. Then I'll say something about removing items from it. And finally, I'll talk about building a linked list one item at a time. This might seem a bit backwards, but you need to be able to traverse a list and locate an item within it before you can delete an item. And the techniques for doing these tasks are fundamental when it comes to building up a linked list. This button doesn't build a linked list per se. Rather, it just makes one so I can experiment with it. Let me show you what I mean. You can see all I'm doing is assigning values directly to the elements of my data array and the array of next pointers. I'm also setting up start and next free directly. So this code doesn't build a list systematically. It just throws one together. However, to all intents and purposes, this is the linked list I talked about in my previous videos. I've declared the arrays and the other variables at the top of the form class, so my list will exist while the form is running. This button doesn't traverse the list, it just scans the arrays in a linear fashion and builds an output string to show me what's inside them and what's inside start and next free. If you're new to linked lists, I suggest you duplicate these two routines. It'll give you a linked list to play with. Let's see what they do. So this button doesn't seem to do much, but it makes a list. And this one shows me what it looks like. So let's do some work with this linked list. This button calls my traversal routine. It's showing me the items, one at a time, in the order implied by the pointers. And here is my traversal routine. It's almost identical to the pseudocode I showed you before. We initialize PTR to the starting item. Then, as we visit each item, we pick up its next pointer so we know what to visit next. This loop continues until such time as we visit an item whose pointer is zero. To search for an item, I pick up one from the form to search for, and I call this function. This is essentially the same routine I used to traverse the list, but as I visit each item, I test it to see if it's the one I'm looking for. If so, I set a boolean to true and I exit the loop. Finally, my function returns the boolean. Let's give this a go. Make a list. Traverse the list. Check for David. David's in there. Check for Kevin. Not found. OK, let's remove David and traverse again. Notice David isn't in there anymore. But if I view the arrays, I can see that he's still inside the data array. Close examination reveals that the pointers are now bypassing him. Let's see how this works. As I showed you when I went through the pseudocode, if I want to remove the starting item, I handle it separately, because I just need to reassign start as the item it's pointing to. And here, I'm traversing the list, searching for the one I want to remove if it's not the starting item. Each time I visit an item, I keep a handle on it when I move on to visit the next item. This means when I locate the one I want to remove, I can set the preceding item's next pointer to the one it was pointing to, and therefore bypass it. Finally, the routine for adding an item to a linked list brings all of these techniques together. The very first item is handled separately. It just needs putting in the data array and its next pointer setting to zero. 
If it's not the very first item, we traverse the existing list, looking for its correct position. And when we find the one it belongs in front of, we set the new item to point to the current item. If the list already contains data, and this is the new starting item, we handle it differently to most items that we would otherwise slot in between a couple of others. That's what's going on here. A new starting item has nothing else pointing to it, except the start pointer. Notice that if it's not the new starting item, we need to redirect the preceding item to point to it, rather like we did to remove an item from the list. This last little section deals with any new node that belongs at the end of the list. The preceding node has to point to it, and its position is given by the next free pointer because it hasn't been incremented just yet. A good way to see what's going on is to step through the code while you're building a list. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. I like to use a couple of watch windows to see what's inside the two array variables side by side. So let's add an item. And I'm going to turn on my watch windows. Okay, let's undock it. And here I'm going to watch a list data. OK, and then I'll have another watch window. Undock it. And I'll keep an eye on the pointers. And then I can continue stepping. So there you have it, the linked list, a procedural VB.NET implementation.